So integration by substitution is the most advanced integration technique you're going to learn in Calc 1. And this is the way that you can solve a lot of the problems that just using power rule and separating fractions don't allow you to solve. So in integration by substitution, it's kind of like the chain rule for antiderivatives. So the main uh, strategy here is if you're doing the der uh, antiderivative of f of x, and f of x is a function that you can't use power rule on, you can't effectively separate it, uh, separating fractions and trying to do it term by term, or anything like that, what you can try is integration by substitution. So what you need to do is substitute one part of the function with its own variable and try to solve it that way instead. So the best way to do this is probably by example. So let me give you uh, an example of a problem here. So let's say we had x squared plus 2 to the third power on the bottom, and I had 4x on the top, and I wanted to do the antiderivative of this function. Well, I certainly can't use any of the rules, like power rule. I can't really separate this, because if I cubed this, I would have to get a whole bunch of terms. It wouldn't really work. You have to use integration by substitution to solve this. So, what you do by substitution is you need to call part of this function its own variable. Usually you use u, but it really doesn't matter. But the strategy for choosing what you want to call u is if you see its derivative somewhere else in the function. There, there's a couple other things I'll get to, too, about where, uh, what's effective for choosing the best uh, u to make the problem simplest. So in here, you can see if I called u everything in this parentheses, x squared plus 2, the derivative of that would be 2x, and this is only off by a constant from 2x at the top, so that's a good one to choose. So what you need to do is, now we want to transform this integral to be in terms of u instead of in terms of x. So, we can already get rid of this x squared plus 2 and just call it u but we'd still be stuck with this 4x and this dx. So remember that the dx, in this case, tells you which variable you're integrating. So we want to change that to u instead of x. The only way you can do that is take your equation that you determined u by and do the derivative of it. du, the derivative of x squared plus 2 would be 2x dx. Now you can see I do have a dx, and we want to get rid of the dx, so we want to solve for dx here. Now a lot of people try to substitute straight in like that, and for a lot of them that's fine. However, the more complex your functions get, it's usually better to just solve for dx itself. So now what this means is instead of dx, we can write this here. So now let's write our next step. We still have 4x in the numerator. Now on the bottom, we're just going to have u to the third power, because our x squared plus 2 became u. And instead of dx, we're going to write du over 2x. And you can see here that these x's are going to cancel out. The 2 is going to cancel out the 4 to make a 2. And finally, to write this most simply, we can bring the 2 outside the integral, and we're just integrating u to the negative 3 power because it's, we have u to the third in the denominator. Now this is a very simple integral. That you can just use power rule on. So what we're going to get here is 2 u to the negative 2 over negative 2 by using your power rule. This is going to cancel out and we're going to get negative u to the negative 2. Lastly, we want to add in what we substituted for u in the first place. So we would have negative x squared plus 2 to the negative 2 plus c. Remember, you always have to add in the plus c at the end. And this would be our antiderivative of this function. So let's go through again what we did here, in that we realized we couldn't use any of our more basic antiderivative rules, so we have to use substitution. So let's talk a little bit more about how you choose uh, what you want to be u. So like I said, first thing you want to look at is can you find something where its derivative, barring you know off by a constant, 
is in here. We have an x squared, so we're looking for anything that just has an x. We see that, so that means using the x squared as u is a good idea because when you do the derivative, the, that part's going to go away. You should always, if you, anything is added or subtracted, you should always combine that into the u because when you do the derivative, it's never going to matter if it was plus 1 or plus 3 or plus 5 or minus 100. It doesn't matter. You should always include that in with the u because it will make, it will not matter essentially uh, uh, because the derivative won't do anything. If you have something to a power, you always do not want to include the power in u. You want to make it just the base. And the reason for that is, first of all, if you just call this u and the rest cancels out, you just get u to a power, and if you have anything just to a power, that's a really easy antiderivative, and it's, you can just solve it from there. The other thing is, if I had called u x squared plus 2 to the third power, this derivative would have been a, way more complex, and this would have canceled, but I would have had more stuff left over, and it definitely would not have been worth it. So, when you're choosing what you want to call u, look for something that its derivative is also somewhere in the function, you want uh, to include any additions and subtractions of constants that you can, and you want to just use the bases of things that are raised to powers and don't include the exponent in the u. And that those three rules will get you through basically every uh, substitution problem. So when you're trying to do all your other things, everything else fails, you can't separate fractions, you can't do your regular power rule, think about substitution and try to use those three rules to determine what you should substitute for. <clears throat>